It's 436 on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. I'm Cliff Kelly, and we have in our studio our wonderful guest, none other than the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam. And, of course, we're streaming live on www.wvon. But not only can you hear us, you can see us today. We have the webcam on, so tune us in. And, of course, we are going to take calls shortly at 591-1690. You've said some very profound things, as you always do. But you talked about domestic problems, Brother Minister, and also foreign, foreign problems. Uh, the inheritance of, of two wars, one we should have never been in, in Iraq. If we had gone to Afghanistan initially rather than Iraq, we might have been a lot better off. But we have another problem in that today it was announced that the Israeli government under the new prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, who you know is a hawk, is talking about now if we don't do something relative to Iran, they're going to make sure that they don't end up with nuclear weapons. So what gets me in this, it puts us in a bad position. Everybody knows Israel has nuclear weapons. They are not signatories to the Non-Nuclear Proliferation Treaty, but they have nuclear weapons, so we don't do anything about that. But we want to tell other countries who even state that they're going to use this for nuclear power. Now, whether they do or not, whether they are trying to get weapons, everybody has the ability to protect themselves. Where does this put us since we have this seemingly carte blanche support of the Israeli government? Well, America and Israel are supposedly friends. Israel right now is seen in the world as a pariah Mm -hmm. state. America has lost influence in the world simply because she has looked the other way when the Israeli Defense Force has committed massacres against the Palestinian people. What happened in Lebanon, what happened in Gaza, uh, has damaged Israel throughout the world, and because America refused to say something to her friend. Now, it seems to me that if I have a friend and he's in my car and he has a bag of reefer, (laughs) I'm putting it on, you know, street terms. (laughs) And my friend uh, knows that if I get caught, I don't have nothing like that on me that he is going to endanger me because we're friends. So if I'm a true friend, I say, brother, get that bag out of my car because I'm not going to lose my car and go to jail because of what you are doing. I'm your friend, but you are not doing a friendly thing. America has leverage with Israel that she is afraid to use. And this goes to the strength of APAC, the American-Israeli Political Action uh, Committee. These are powerful men and women of influence. And I have, you know, in uh, my talk on uh, Savior's Day, a definition for terrorism that was um, in the uh, Patriot Act. And it was, I got to find it, I have it here somewhere, but this definition, if I can find it, um, it, in, in words it says, when you can coerce somebody and it, through intimidation and fear to go along with your policies, that's a form of terrorism. Why doesn't the members of Congress speak when they know that the things that Israel is doing will hurt them and hurt America as well. It is because they are afraid that if they go against what is seen to be beneficial to Israel, they will lose their position. 
That means that these people are no longer the representatives of the American people. They are the representatives of the moneyed interests that they fear that control them. So, but one more thing I would say, Brother Cliff, we shouldn't have been in Afghanistan either. Mm -hmm. That was a, a wicked trick. In my judgment, even though bin Laden was there, when bin Laden was accused by George W. Bush of being behind the 9-11 uh, tragedy, Mullah Omar, who was the leader of the country and the leader of the Taliban, following the Quran. And the Quran says, when an unrighteous man brings you news, look carefully into it, lest you do uh, harm and be sorry for what you did. So Mullah Omar said to President Bush, show me the proof that bin Laden was responsible for this and I will turn him over to you. Bush said, we will have none of that. What the American people do not know is that the Taliban, a, a very, very, uh, I would say, strict interpreter of the Quran, and many Muslims do not agree with their interpretation, nevertheless, when they came to power, the drugs that uh, came out of Afghanistan from the poppy that was there, that slowed down, came to a halt. What the American people do not know is that UNOCAL, one of its uh, stockholders, is Dick Cheney, wanted to bring a pipeline from Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, uh, through uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan to the Arabian Sea to bring oil. The Taliban did not agree with that. They called the Taliban to the United States and fettered them and treated them like they were who they are, uh, a head of a government, and they offered the Taliban a carpet of bombs or a carpet of gold if they would allow that pipeline to come through Afghanistan. When they refused, this was in July of 2001. Then uh, September the 11th came and then the attack on Afghanistan. It had nothing to do with Osama bin Laden because if it did, this is now six years later and Osama been forgotten. <laughs> yeah. Bin Laden. Dead or alive. Yeah, you see? Right. So now mm -hmm. Afghanistan has become, in my humble judgment, America's new Vietnam. And as America had to get out of Vietnam and never won that war, America and all of the allies with America will not win in Afghanistan. These are old, hardened warriors, and they have crushed many great nations, and they look forward to crushing this one. What was the per I knew about the pipe.